We have a Florida family who are really pioneers in a brave new world. They have volunteered to be the first ever to have microchip identification devices implanted into their body. You've already heard them say it. Gun owners, Christians, conservatives, libertarians, liberals, anybody that doesn't go along with global new world order tyranny will be watched, will be controlled, will be tracked. The New World Order gang has a reason they want to control you. Simply put, that reason is to make you and your family bow down, submit, and worship their hidden masters. To bow down to the bull or Baal, the evil bird god, Satan, who is the owl who sees in the dark, and who, through these world leaders, is watching over his kingdom. The goal is the subversion of the whole of humanity, total domination over the earth, to turn men and women through fear, intimidation, and psychological manipulation to embracing these wicked spirits as friends of humankind upon their physical return to reign over all kindreds, peoples, and tongues. These puppets of the devil salute one another with the hand sign of the horned one, representing Baal, or the bull, or horned goat, and horned owl. They are widespread throughout the world and represent some of the most famous and powerful men and women on earth, not just in politics, but entertainment, science, industry, and yes, sad to say, even religion under the guise of Christianity and other major religions. The evidence is in. The vast majority of the great men and mighty men of the earth are worshippers of Satan and his minions. The New World Order is not just about control, power, and economics. It's about spiritual deception. It's about deceiving the human race so that these wicked spirits can separate mankind from his maker and torment their souls for an eternity in hell. I wish I could say that I am making all this up, but unfortunately, I'm not. Now listen to a true, noble American who tried to warn us years ago about this secret order of the fallen angels. Listen to his warning very closely. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweighed the dangers which are cited to justify it. Even today, there is little value in opposing the threat of a closed society by imitating its arbitrary restrictions. Even today, there is little value in ensuring the survival of our nation if our traditions do not survive with it. And there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. That I do not intend to permit to the extent that it's in my control. And no official of my administration, whether his rank is high or low, civilian or military, should interpret my words here tonight as an excuse to censor the news, to stifle dissent, to cover up our mistakes, or to withhold from the press and the public the facts they deserve to know. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine 
that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. No president should fear public scrutiny of his program, for from that scrutiny comes understanding, and from that understanding comes support or opposition, and both are necessary. I am not asking your newspapers to support an administration, but I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people, for I have complete confidence and the response and dedication of our citizens whenever they are fully informed. I not only could not stifle controversy among your readers, I welcome it. This administration intends to be candid about its errors, for as a wise man once said, an error doesn't become a mistake until you refuse to correct it. We intend to accept full responsibility for our errors, and we expect you to point them out when we miss them. Without debate, Without criticism, no administration and no country can succeed, and no republic can survive. That is why the Athenian lawmaker Sola decreed it a crime for any citizen to shrink from controversy. And that is why our press was protected by the First Amendment, the only business in America specifically protected by the Constitution, not primarily to amuse and entertain, not to emphasize the trivial and the sentimental, not to simply give the public what it wants, but to inform, to arouse, to reflect, to state our dangers and our opportunities, to indicate our crises and our choices, to lead, mold, educate, and sometimes even anger public opinion. This means greater coverage and analysis of international news, for it is no longer far away and foreign, but close at hand and local. It means greater attention to improved understanding of the news, as well as improved transmission. And it means, finally, that government at all levels must meet its obligation to provide you with the fullest possible information outside the narrowest limits of national security. And so it is to the printing press to the recorder of man's deeds, the keeper of his conscience, the courier of his news, that we look for strength and assistance. And indeed, like a self-fulfilled prophecy, the silent buried, keepers not quieted its the opposition. Is silent, not its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its descent is a silence. Any descent is removed and the masses like now being psychologically conditioned to embrace the God of these powerful world leaders. They have been preparing the mindset of the masses for generations now to believe in and embrace these fallen angels, conditioning us through such programs and movies as Star Trek, Alien, the Stargate, and Worlds at War to receive the first visitors from the heavens as friends and the second as an invading army that must be stopped with their help. These extraterrestrial visitors will present themselves as an advanced alien race responsible for our creation who have returned to help us to evolve to the next level of supposed enlightenment to help us all discover the divinity within and indeed more than ever before the world is turning their eyes outward searching for the answer to the question is there anybody out there <laughs>